This morning, we're going a bit deep because I believe that that's where God is leading us. And so I want to start off with two questions. And that is, have you ever been face to face with a fresh possibility or an opportunity that required you to step out in faith, but didn't? Or have you come to a place of great hardship and tribulation and difficulty on your journey, and you've been having to face the battle of your mind, the battle of your heart, the battle of what other people are saying, the battle of your emotions? Have you ever experienced that? Because along the journey that each of us are on, there's sprinkles, or in New Zealand they call it spitting, or showers of doubt can arise because this morning we're dealing to it. And you see, I don't know each of y'all's doubts. I don't know where you're at in terms of your heart. I don't know what's going on deep down inside of you, but I believe that God who's here this morning does. And I believe is that He's here so ready to help you understand and encourage you. Because a lot of the times when we receive doubts, we can feel singled out like, oh, I got doubts about this and I feel that my faith is weaker compared to others. Or I feel that if I speak about them, I'll be embarrassed because I'm a Christian and I'm meant to have faith and no doubts. But when you look at Scripture, there is lots of people, lots of people who got doubts. In fact, even apostles had their doubts whenever they were told that Jesus was alive. (laughs) Because the truth is, is that doubts are normal and that everyone gets and has them. It's no half pie around that fact. And no matter how long we've been on the journeys, whether we're beginning it, or a third of the way in, or we're towards the end, getting ready to meet Jesus, doubts can arise. And so a good question to ask ourselves is actually, well, what am I doubting? Because sometimes we can feel it, but we don't know what it is. Sometimes we can feel it in our mind and we sense that something's off, but it's quite hard to pinpoint it. And so I just have a few of them up here that I think will help us navigate what we're actually doubting. So the first one is that, am I doubting myself that God can work through me, in me, and use me for his purposes? Am I doubting my ability to accomplish any given thing or task, especially when there's a deadline? Am I doubting God's existence even, his power to heal and to see miracles, and even during hardship, his promises? Am I doubting others? Am I doubting hearing God's voice when I receive a word of knowledge or a prophecy? I'm tossing and turning and flopping like a fish whether to give it or not because I'm wrestling the question, is it you, Lord, or is it me? Am I doubting my efforts in terms of being effective, whether as a follower of Jesus or whether at work being an employer or being an employee or being a boss, whatever position you're in? Am I doubting that? Am I doubting the effectiveness that I am as a parent? Am I doubting the effectiveness as I am as a a disciple? Am I doubting my direction in terms of where I'm going? Feels like my compass is just spinning in circles and in circles and in circles, and I don't have a clue where God is leading me. Am I doubting committing to church and life group because of things that's happened in the past or some perceptions that we have that's affecting that? Am I doubting if, really, if people really care? Am I really cared about at this church? Am I really cared about in my family? Do people really care? And am I doubting? Am I doubting anything? Each of us, including myself, come across either one, many, maybe all of these. And a lot of the times there's lots of reasons why, which I think are helpful to unpackage. 
And so here are some reasons. Sometimes we doubt as an excuse, a lack of confidence, stubbornness, a lack of evidence, a lack of encouragement. We need further understanding. A worldview clash, I'll just unpackage that, is that um, in, my, in the beginning of my journey, I doubted whether God could heal or not because my worldview is that I came, you know, I was really strong in science back in school. And so I doubted whether God could actually perform in that way. And so what I did through the journey, I asked lots of questions. And sure enough, my faith would grow a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. And the pivoting point was when I firsthand saw healings when I went on the mission trip in Cambodia. And to me, I thought, wow, that, that's pretty clear and definite. I'm a believer now. But sometimes we have other worldviews that clash and contribute to our doubts, especially God's way of thinking and doing things. Past wounds and genuine hardship are some valid reasons as to why we can feel these things. But I'm here to encourage you that it's okay. It's okay. Because I want to share you guys a story for the purpose of relating to all of you guys. A purpose that just because I'm a pastor doesn't mean I escape doubts. Because <laughs> I face them just like you guys. So here's my story. Two weeks ago, my uncle passed away over in Texas. And something like, when something like that happens, and I've shared with you guys how homesick I get, I say to God, well, God, that's not very assuring for me going back so that I could see my grandparents alive before they die. Not very assuring at all, Lord. Quite straight up with him. And the hardest thing for me was that I don't get the blessing of grieving with my family. I don't get the chance to hold their hands. I'm over here. And so I'm wrestling with God and myself, and I'm praying and praying and praying and praying for hours, wrestling with God about this. And after my hours of praying, I just give up my hands like this, God says to me, he says, Rob, I'm holding your hands. I'm holding them. I said, thank you, Lord. He said, Rob, I'm the God here that's holding your hands, which means I'm the God over there that will be holding theirs. He said, you keep following me. You keep following me. And that was the thing that I needed. That was what I needed in terms of overcome my doubt. I needed to hear from God. I needed to desperately pray to God. I had to build calluses on my knees for him so that I could overcome my doubts. Amen. And so the point that I'm making is that will we allow, will you allow God and others to help us, help you with the doubts in our hands, in your hands, and in your hearts? Will you allow God into the door of your heart? Because the truth is, having doubts isn't the problem. Lots of people have doubts. In fact, when we look at it, it's how we respond to them depends if it becomes one. That's actually where God wants us, what God wants us to understand. And so how I dealt with it, like I said, I prayed and I messaged my family. I called my mom, I called my dad, I messaged my cousin who I haven't spoken to in about 15 years. And he said, thanks bro, I really appreciate it. And you see, I chose to respond by surrendering. And sometimes we need to do that. And so, 
I found this quote that I think is quite challenging and helpful if we look at it right. But it says this. It says, doubt your doubts before you doubt your faith. <laughs> but how often can we all agree that our doubts feel so real? <laughs> so, how, so how do we come to that place? Is the way I look at it. How do you come to a place where you doubt your doubts? So I have some ideas. First one is by asking healthy questions. I asked God lots of questions. I said, God, why? God, how? God, please, will you make a way for me to go one day? Being straight up with God. And I think asking healthy questions is really helpful to come to a place of real faith. See, when we look at it, John the Baptist was Jesus' cousin. And he, in fact, he baptized him. He said, look, the lamb before God. He says, whose sandals I'm not worthy to untie. Then he has, and after he baptized Jesus, he has a hard word with someone in authority. He gets sent to prison, and oh man, who you can imagine the difficulty probably he, he's having. And then he has his disciples, and he asks them, go to Jesus and ask him this, are you the Messiah, or should we expect somebody else? John the Baptist is doubting, y'all. <laughs> but he responded in the right way. He asked some questions. <laughs> he told his disciples and asked them to ask Jesus. And Jesus responded, tell, Jesus, or tell John that the eyes of the blind are receiving sight and so forth. And they go back. And I cannot imagine the joy that John has affirming his faith. See, it's okay to ask questions. We don't have to feel stupid or dumb. We don't have to feel that our faith is weaker. Because let me tell you, if you muster up the courage and boldness to ask a question, the chances are there's somebody else in the group who's experiencing the same thing. And they'll respect you that you had the courage to ask it. Earnestly praying, seeking God's perspective. I prayed for hours before I received God's perspective. <laughs> I pray that God reveals to it to you, maybe in a shorter time frame. But it's your journey, not mine. So I'll just pray for God's will to be done <laughs> as you pray. But it's important is that whatever we feel, we pray and we pray and we pray and seek God's, and seek God's word and his perspective. Because whatever he says, amen. Amen? <laughs> Being connected in community. Sometimes we doubt ourselves because... Well, we're not in community. We're not in the fellowship. We're not receiving their encouragement that we need. And we can feel a bit like, oh, I don't know if I was, you know, did a good job at this or at that or how I performed or how I did the announcements. But you've got to ask ourselves, am I in community? Am I involved? Am I seeking the daily or weekly encouragement that I need? Because all of us need it. In fact, Scripture in Hebrews, it says we need encouragement daily. <laughs> daily. So it's real important. Asking for prayer amongst other people. There's no shame. In fact, it's gain when we ask for prayer. Sometimes we think it's a weak thing whenever we ask for it. But let me tell you, the strongest, mightiest people I've ever met are the ones who have the courage and humility to say, I need you, Lord. Can you pray for me? Can you pray for me, guys? Can you pray for me, team? Those are the ones I want in, in, in the team. Those are the ones, you know, that I, I, I see like, oh, wow, that's really encouraging. And I pray that that inspires other people to come into that place. It's powerful. And being open to others, that sense of transparency. Sometimes we don't know what to say, but say what you can. And the benefit about being in community, all of us can help unpackage it just a bit more. In, my, in the beginning of my journey, I didn't know how to, how to talk about my feelings. That was, you know, you just didn't do that where I came from. But through being in community, hearing how other people shared, I learned how to share too. So that's one of the benefits of being together. And this one, receive inspiration from others' stories. You see, when we engage in community, we hear other people's stories. We share what God is doing in their life, how they've talked to somebody, how they prophesied over somebody, and that raises your faith and decreases the doubt. Isn't that awesome? It's amazing. So guys, I want to finish 
But this scripture, in Mark chapter 9, verses 22 and 24, it's a story about a father's son who was possessed by a demon. It has often thrown him into fire or water to kill him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. And Jesus, re Jesus repl replied, if you can, if, if, everything is possible for one who believes. Immediately, the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. <laughs> Guys, I want to finish with this. Having more faith is closer than you realize. And a lot closer than you realize. And all it takes is that next step in your journey. So if you're feeling like you have some doubts that you want to address and you want to increase your faith, there's going to be a space and time after for you to receive some prayer. Don't shy away. Don't put it underneath the rug. Don't procrastinate. I encourage you, do it now. Because when you do it now, you're going to figure out the how later on rather than procrastinating about it. Amen? So let's pray. Lord, we thank you how you understand the circumstances that we go through on a daily, weekly, monthly, yearly basis. Lord, right now, we look to you and we thank you that your spirit is stirring within our hearts. I pray that we do not ignore that stirring. I pray, Lord, that we don't slap your spirit's hand away. We don't close the door, but we allow your work to be done so that we can have that faith adventure, so that we can have that faith journey, Lord, so that we can really live in the fullness of your freedom and purposes and plans the way you've intended. We look to you right now in this space, in this moment, to give you what we need to give you. Thank you for what you are doing and what you are going to do. We bless every person here. We love you and thank you. And everybody said, Amen.